Hawk and Kev. Yeah. Me. We're, run, we're running with that, apparently. <clears throat> okay. In two different ways. Woo! <laughs> All right. Uh, this week's Indie Star Spotlight, I wanted to take a quick break away from... I felt maybe I was being a little uh, Chikara heavy. Uh, sort of. Easy to do. Because I did Tim Dots, I did Icarus. I didn't do Kevin Steed in between, which he didn't have too much involvement with them. But, you know, what the hey. I went for a guy who's uh, making big waves on the scene, uh, especially in the last four years, uh, five years-ish. Uh, Mr. Standing 450 himself, Rich Swan. This guy's phenomenal. Uh, you hear that? Standing 450. Yeah, pull that off, guys. Yeah. If you can do that, post in the comments. If you try yeah. it at home, post in the comments. If, Don't try it at home, but if you do, post in the comments. All right. Uh, Rich Swan uh, started training when he was 14 years old. That's Getting that he, young. That's why he can do a stand That's why he's so good. He started uh, early. In 2005 in Pennsylvania and debuted in 2008 uh, using ring names Rich Lee and El Negro Mysterio. Uh, but it really wasn't, he didn't gain too much prominence until he started training with the CZW training school. In 2009, really? yeah, with the DJ Hyde and Drew Gulak, uh, along That's with uh, Ruckus and Sabian from the Blackout. Some good people to be training with. Yeah. Uh, and he made the debut for the promotion in a dark match, which he lost. Uh, made his main card debut in June, uh, beating Chris Halo. They did a tournament to determine the first ever uh, CCW TV champion, which he won his first round match, but lost the second round match. Uh, by Adam, against Adam Cole, another great guy. Uh, in January in 2010, uh, Rich Swan started teaming with Ryan McBride, and they became the team the Irish Drive By. <laughs> I love it. Uh, slightly racist, but you know, yeah. very CCW. Yeah. Uh, they had uh, some pretty good uh, tag team matches against the Spanish Armada, the Switchblade Conspiracy. Uh, they got a ta shot at the tag team championships. Uh, but ended up losing to the best around Bruce Maxwell and TJ Cannon. Uh, they earned more. Yeah. Uh, they got more victories over teams like Notorious Inc., uh, the Garden State Gods, and Team Maction. That name is so 90s I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Team Maction? Yeah. Uh, Just run with it. Yeah. In January of 2010, for a different promotion, uh, Real Championship Wrestling, uh, Rich Swan would win his first professional wrestling championship, he would win the uh, Real Championship Wrestling Cruiserweight Championship, uh, nice. beating Lindsay Dorado. Ooh, that would have been a really good match. Lindsay Dorado is... He's totally good, underutilized, underbooked wrestling. Absolutely. Uh, he had one successful title hard. defense against Skull. And then would lose in a three-way match against, uh, against Steve Diaz, which also included Skull, in the three-way ladder match. <coughs> uh, but that was in uh, June, so we kept the title for five, six months. Something like that. That's a good first run. Yeah, also in early 2010, or mid-2010, uh, he would debut for Dragon Gate USA. Uh, debuting at the tapings for End of the Dragon 2010 pay-per-view. Uh, and would then soon they soon after a few months later debut for uh, Dragon Gate's sister promotion of all, uh, taking part in a six way match which was won by Johnny Gargano. Uh, he came in and was involved in other multiple man matches, four way and six way, respectively won by Chuck Taylor and Brody Lee. Uh, then at uh, Dragon Gate's first ever or Dragon Gate USA's first ever live eye pay-per-view, he lost a homicide. Some great stars on this. Um, yeah. Uh, just yeah. in the f first couple of years, I mean, he's got against some exactly. high-talent guys. It's great. Uh, after that match, Swan was approached by Austin Aries, who offered to take him under his wing as his new protege. Whoa. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, Better than but, it. Oh, shit. This is uh... But later in the show, Yoshino uh, beats Austin Aries, and Rich Swan turns his offer down. Oh. Uh, well, later in the same event, Rich Swan would come out along with Chuck Taylor and Johnny Gargano, 
and would attack SEMA in ricochet before announcing that they were not joining any of Dragon Gate USA's established stables, but were instead forming their own stable. The, the Kentucky Swans. No. No, the Rodent. Okay. Uh, definitely a very big heel stable in uh, the whole of 2010 and later years of uh, Dragon Gate USA. Uh, they would have their first match together uh, at the following day's Freedom Fight 10, 2010 pay-per-view, defeating uh, Genki Horiguchi, Ricochet, and Austin Aries in a six-man tag match. Damn. Uh, yeah, awesome match. 2011, back to CCW. Uh, Irish Drive-By was defeated by the Runaways, uh, which ended up being uh, the Irish Drive-By's last match. Oh. Swan would try twice and fail to qualify for the best of the best 10 tournament uh, and unsuccessfully challenge Adam Cole for the CCW Junior Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Swan was looking to give his career a reboot of sorts. and uh, Everyone's doing reboots these days. But this on May 14th, uh, he, he would lose that. again to Alex Cullen. Uh, after the match... Robbie Moreno, Ruckus, and Chrissy Rivera entered the ring announcing that they were going to reform the stable Blackout. Uh, ah. Offering both Swan and his opponent, uh, Alex, spots in the stable. They both accepted. And the new partners, they formed uh, Blackout, but this time they were a new, exciting, kind of fan favorite version of the stable. Uh, Which previously, Blackout was Ruckus, Sabian, Sabian Joker, Joker Kingston, Kingston, Jack Evans was there, Robin Moreno was still there. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, he took a six month break, uh, in which k Fabe was uh, representing Blackout in Japan. Oh, okay. Uh, Swan came back in November, where the rest of the Blackout, him, and Alex Cullen, and Ruckus, beat Alex Payne, Joe Gacy, and Ryan Slater in a six-man tag match. Uh, back to what happened in his 2011 in Dragon Gate. Uh, Swan was defeated by Austin Aries in a singles match. The same weekend, Rodan started a rivalry with the Blood Warriors, a new villainous stable uh, led by Sema, effectively ending Rodan's run as heels. Big, oh, okay. Bigger heel stable comes and attacks smaller heel stable. Now the small heel stable looks like the face stable. So, uh, uh, shield versus white. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. Uh, March 1st, Swan and the rest of the Ronin stable started their first tour of Japan, which is why he was gone from CCW. He wasn't <laughs> representing Blackout, he was in the Ronin. Sorry, Blackout guys, if this is the first time you ever heard this. Aw, oh, shit. You lied to you. <laughs> You're a liar. They, you know, he was. Uh, <clears throat> but basically, they tour, during the tour, they mainly worked matches against the Blood Warriors and variations of tag teams and six man tags. Uh, tour lasted until March 15th. Ronan worked those matches. Uh, April 3rd, they did the ulti ult open the Ultimate Gate. Uh, uh, Ares, who lost a Loser Leaves match, basically. Did a whole passing the torch gimmick to the basic the whole rodent stable. Oh, okay. I guess. Uh, and he's in there doing the whole bit, and then all of a sudden rodent attacks, causing the swerve. Oh, Ares is, or I mean, the Blood Warriors attack rodent, and swerve. Austin Ares is now aligned with the Blood Warriors. Oh, what a dick! Yeah, right. Uh, Good move, but what a dick. Ares, you're a dick. Dick move, bro. Uh, June, uh, Fearless 2011, Swan lost a singles match to Sema, the leader of the Blood Warriors, uh, following interference from Austin Aries. Uh, two days later, End of the Dragon 2011, Swan and Gargano teamed with Yoshino in a six-man elimination tag, where they defeated, uh, Aries, Brody Lee, and Sema. Uh, that summer, Swan, uh, started his second tour of Japan. Uh, and Dragon Gate in Japan, this time without Chuck Taylor or Johnny Gargano. Uh, during the tour, uh, since he wasn't there with his Ronin stable mates, Gargano and Taylor, he aligned himself with the Blood Warriors Rival Stable Junction 3. Uh -huh. And uh, went for some titles, some tag titles. Nothing really, too much came out of that. 
Him and his stablemate Gamma entered the 2011 Summer Adventure Tag League, but were eliminated by Kanda and Nurupidoi, representing the Blood Warriors, in the first round, so they didn't make it too far. And then uh, he kind of, because they had, uh, it was during the era Dragon Gate had the Open the Awari Gate Championship, which was their comedy championship bid, uh, Rich Swan would uh, also adopt a Western themed gimmick and become Swan Hansen. Yes. <laughs> and, win, and he win the Open the Awari Gate Championship. That is awesome. He wins on name alone Swan the Man Hansen. My name uh, is Swan Hansen. Here's our duck. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. That November, Swan would come back to the States to take part of the Dragon Gate USA show. Uh, during the events, uh, the Roman stable mates started to have some internal issues. Uh, the Freedom Fight 11, 2013, or I mean 2011, Freedom Fight, November 13th. Swan earned a big win. He pinned the Blood Warriors member Akira Tozawa in a tag match where he was teaming up with Chuck Taylor. Six days later, Swan went back to Japan. Him and uh, his Junction 3 stable mates unsuccessfully challenged for the Open the Triangle Gate Championship. Afterwards, uh, Tanizaki from the Blood Warriors attacked Swan and stole the Open the Warrior Gate Championship belt. Which, because of that, ended up becoming vacated. Uh, starting up 2012 in CCW, he receives a shot at the World Junior Heavyweight Championship, but lost to the defending champion Sammy Callahan. Uh, Swan became uh, was kind of getting a little more, a little less pushed in the American promotions because we're spending more and more time in Japan. Makes sense. Uh, that kind of resulted in the blackout not being a very long-lived. Uh, revival of the group uh, took another seven month long break from CCW uh, returned to that August losing to Shane Strickland who was a newcomer of the promotion uh, they had a rematch next month almost exactly a month later uh, Strickland won again uh, wow, very good uh, Swan did the whole you know I want to shake your hand after the match Swan or Strickland uh, goes to do it, and Swan hits the spin kick. It's full of dick moves. Yeah, and then that November, uh, Swan decides he's going to go up to the next level and challenges Masada for the CCW Heavyweight Championship. Oh, uh, didn't win the little ones. I'm going to go for the big one. Yeah, which wasn't a good deal because he didn't win. Why well, did you win the first time, bro? Uh, Swan also in his bad luck running for titles would try again in a four way match to win the television championship at CCW and lost. Uh, Swan and Strickland had their third singles match against each other at Cage of Death 14, uh, where Swan actually won. And his opponent died? Not quite. Close. Why did they call it the Cage of Death? Well, that was I want my money back. That wasn't the Cage of Death match. That was a preliminary bout on the Cage of Death match card. But I'm pretty sure the Cage of Death match guy died. Nobody anyway. dies in the match. <laughs> then I want my money back. No, the cage dies. Oh. It's a cage made of death. A, l a little piece inside the fans that watch that die a little bit. Every time they watch it, people do the horrendous things that they do to each other. Yeah. If you've never watched a Cage of Death match, do. Unless you're squeamish. Or a child. Don't let your kids watch yeah. it. Unless you're really twisted. Or make them watch it and be like, you act up? So I'm sending you to the cage of death. Adults, if you're watching, check out some deathmatch stuff. Check out some cage of death. Parents? If, if, you're, if your kids are watching, watch some Chikara. Yeah, Parents, absolutely. if you're watching, don't take parenting advice from us. Yeah. We're bad That's, people. None of us have children. <laughs> Back to you, Kevin. Uh, what was the word from our sponsors? I guess. Not sure who's sponsoring us. Uh, the bad commercial. The not parents of the not parents of America. All right. All right. Uh, in 2012, uh, February, Swans returned to Dragon Gate. Uh, on the February 9th, he took part in a 
14 man tag team match with seven on both sides. Uh, That's blood, intense. Where the Blood Warriors defeated the Junction 3 as a result, forced the Junction 3 to disband. Uh, which is funny, Junction 3 had seven. I was, ju- I was just going to say, Junction 3 had seven people. The Junction 3 is bad at math. Okay? Fair enough. They did not watch Schoolhouse Rock. And they're in a lot of cage death matches. <laughs> Bragg and they have a lot of different things so they couldn't. Yeah. Do so Rich Swan, uh, yeah. after the Blood Three was forced to disband in Dragon Gate, Swan aligned himself with the other stable, a new stable called the New World One International Stable. Uh, March 29th, Swan made another short return to the states, uh, taking a part in a uh, event that was co-promoted by Dragon Gate USA and CCW. Whoa. Uh, which Ronan lost. Uh, Ronan, Swan Gargano, and Taylor lost uh, to Akira Tozawa, BXB Hulk, and Impa Nation in a three way trios match. Three teams of three. Uh, the other team that wasn't involved in the. Uh, the victory. The, yeah, the fall was the CZW team Eric Cannon, Pinky Sanchez, and Sammy Callahan. That is an awesome team. I want to see that team back three. Like right now, Eric Cannon is one of my favorite indie guys. Yeah. Uh, during the following uh, day, open the Ultimate Gate 2012 pay per view. Uh, Chuck Taylor would turn on Johnny Gargano, effectively ending the Ronin stable altogether. Now was the was this all? This was kind of around the time when Fist was ending in Chikara as well. Or was that you know, when? It's about a year before. Oh, okay. Because Chikara sort of falling apart in 2013. So That's right. On a long enough time frame, this is around the same time. Yeah, in the, the large spectrum of things, yes. Uh, March 31st, uh, 2012, at Mercury Rising, the Swan was part of a six way Chuck Taylor Invitational match, which was won by El Generico. <clears throat> they had the same event. Uh, Gargano was being attacked by Chuck Taylor. Swan came out and made a save. They chased Chuck Taylor out of the building. Uh, Swan came back in April to Dragon Gate for another tour during another Japan tour. Uh, made appearances back as the Swan Hansen gimmick. <clears throat> uh, defeated Chuck Taylor via disqualification in a grudge match. Uh, following day at End of the Dragon 2012, Swan and the World 1 International stablemate Ricochet were defeated by AR Fox and SEMA in a tag team match, which I'd like to see. That'd be a great uh, match. Holy crap. And it was a match for the vacant Open the United Gate Championship, the tag team titles there. Oh, okay. On uh, November 2, November 2nd, at uh, Fearless 2012, Swan picked Chuck Taylor for the win. November 2. <laughs> November 2. Where the Miz fought the Sheamus. <laughs> the day before his birthday, November the 3. Yeah. This is November 3. This is November 2, the sequel to November. <laughs> yes. And the calendar you get October, November, November, November 2, 2, December. <laughs> it's really ah, twice. That's funny. Uh, you dick. So is my daddy. Well, yeah, he was just like. Two days after this, like it's the second. Okay, like four days after. <laughs> Just like the Junction Three, I can't do math. <laughs> uh, yeah, they had seven members. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the same math. <laughs> Check it out. Fuck the Junction Three, November third, had seven members on the seventh. Check that out. Yeah. Check that out. For the Junction Three. All right, back to, back to November second at Fearless 2012. Uh, Rich Swan pinned Chuck Taylor. Uh, in a six-man tag. He finally won a match! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's lost so many matches. He finally uh, won one. He was teaming with uh, ACH and SEMA, and Chuck Taylor was representing his new stable, the Gentleman's Club, uh-huh. with uh, Drew Gulak and Orange Cassidy. Which, watch some Gentleman's Club uh, videos on... Hilarious. YouTube. They're short and sweet and to the really funny point. So... <clears throat> So, Rich Swan was teaming with ACH? Yeah, they didn't see him. That, That's why they won. That is an unbelievable... Like, SEMA, I don't know too much about, but ACH and Rich Swan together. Holy crap. 
That is a that's a freaking tag team right there. Yeah. That is amazing. Two days later, Freedom Fight 2012. Swan beat Taylor in an ODQ match. Uh, on March 3rd, Swan would team with the World One International Stablemates uh, and win the Open the Triangle Gate Championships. Holy they're, shit, he won again and he won a title. Yeah, their, wow. uh, their trios yeah. championship, which I think is a great idea. Bitch, you are on a roll. 2012 was a good year for Swan. Yeah, uh... I call him Rich because he's you know, one of the first name bases. Yeah, then May 10th, he would enter the King of the King of Gate tournament and eliminate be eliminated in the first round by Genki Horiguchi. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. The does Dragon Gate just like take these literal translations from Japanese, and that's why these names sound funny? Probably. Okay. Just making sure. It just sounds to me like they're straight out of an anime. Yeah. Exactly. Which yeah. I'm, which yeah, they're just there's like okay, this means this. Okay, Japanese to English. Okay, open the king. All right, we're gonna open the king. What, what the hell not? Who closed the king? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2012, the end of 2012-ish October would also mark the debut of Rich Swan in pro wrestling gorilla. Aha! Now uh, social start getting good. Yeah, uh, where he lost to Roderick Strong. No, it's not gonna get good. <laughs> It's gonna get good match wise. Was he a horrible first yeah. one? Uh, he like, he's so strong, dude. It's hard to beat him. Yeah, it is. He's so he, it's really hard. He's he's really it's really hard to beat strong. a guy who can do a standing four fifty. Uh, his second appearance uh, was that December. He loses to El Generico. Again. Uh, and then uh, the following year. Uh, 2013, uh, him and Ricochet would team up to uh, wrestle in their DDT4, their yearly invitational tag team tournament, dubbing themselves the Inner City Machine Guns. Yes. Uh, they were eliminated in the first so round. So instead of here, they were like here. Yeah. No, that's interstate. Slightly. <laughs> slightly yeah. in further. Yeah. No. It's a big city. You can't do that. You gotta like take your hand and then take a baby's hand. <laughs> and so, like, baby sand is like here, and then there's somewhere in the that's still a, that's still a big ass city. And that yeah. that whole thing is a city. Holy fuck, that's metropolis. <laughs> uh, so the inner city machine guns would <laughs> enter the uh, DDT four and uh, lose the first round to the Yellow Bucks. That's, uh, what's wrong, Rich? Not starting 2013 off very well. The uh, return they would come back to take part in PWG's All-Star Weekend, and they would defeat uh, A.R. Fox and Samurai Del Sol. Holy shit! Uh, who's now Callisto. And Good. I was about to say he's the Tommy Dreamer of the Indies, but he's winning something. <laughs> <laughs> Here and there. Uh, hey, on the Dreamer. first night, the second Dreamer. night, uh, yeah. well, they would just like for just one. Uh, the next night, because they're all-star we get two nights, AR Fox would join them in a losing effort to a very large team. Brian Cage, Kevin Steen, and Michael Elgin. Yeah. yeah, if you, yeah. Who, if, I, if you thought Elgin, you had a chance going to that one. Michael Elgin and Brian Cage together, the unbreakable effing machines. Yeah. And then you add in Kevin Steen, you were fucked. Uh, like, I'm pretty sure that's not so much a team name as it's just a fact. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, later that year at PWG's 10 year anniversary show, uh, there would be a three way ladder match uh, where Eddie Edwards and Roderick Strong would team together against the uh, Inner City Machine Guns. Both teams challenging the Young Bucks for their tag team titles. Uh -huh. Awesome three way ladder match. Unfortunately, the Young Bucks were the of course they did. Uh, because Rich Swan was involved. <laughs> yeah. Swan uh, returned to PWG August 30th to take part in the 2013 Battle of Los Angeles. Uh, was eliminated in the first round by Michael Elkin. I'm sorry, we I think we this have makes Rich, Rich Swan, Swan sounds really bad. <laughs> we should He's have a great wrestler. He just doesn't. Fantastic. We should have a Rich Swan owned account. <laughs> Let's think of it this way, guys. If you don't know who Rich Swan is, he's the black doll Ziggler of the Indies. That's true. Yeah. Super great athletic guy who can make just about anyone look like an awesome opponent. Which means he loses a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Inner City Machine Guns came back this year, 2014, Aha. for the VVT4 and uh, the, yeah, their tag team tournament, and made it to the finals Whoa. this year before losing to Chuck Taylor and Trent Barretta, the best friends. I like that dude. At I, least I at like least that name so much I can't. I just can't. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You guys win. <laughs> We're the best friends. Here's the tournament. Uh, you know, but at least they made it to the finals this go-round, yeah, not the yeah. first round. That means next year, Rich Swan's winning the thing. He's lost two years in a row. Uh, back to Dragon Gate for a little bit. Uh, Swan would team up in 2013 with Ricochet, Inner City with Shane Guns, both representing the World 1 International Stable, unsuccessfully challenged the Young Bucks for the Open the United Gate Tag Team Championship. Yeah. And, and then uh, the Evolve 24, Rich Swan would unsuccessfully form, challenge former Roman stablemate Johnny Gargano in a uh, Open the Freedom Gate Championship match. Yeah, we know how that ended. Uh, if you don't know how that ended, go back to our first episode where we talk about Johnny Gargano's illustrious run as the Open the Freedom Gate champion. Yeah, yeah uh, also because I'm biased towards Takara, uh, April 24, 2010. Going back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Swan debuted for Chikara in their Raid Able to Race tournament. Which is where, the, that's the first time I saw Rich Swan. Yeah, I uh, took part in the opening round four way match uh, versus uh, Cheech, Frightmare, and the eventual winner of that year's Raid Able to Race, Ophidia. One Didn't of you pick Rich Swan because you were doing, because you were getting too Chikara heavy? Yeah. But he's got to go back to Chikara. That's a really good match. Two oh, matches. Oh, He's had two matches in Chicago. Oh, I'm yeah. just saying. And then uh, February 2011, he would unsuccessfully challenge Frightmare for the Alliance Cup Championship. Of course. So, like Evolve, and like Dragon Gate, and like CZW, Rich Swan didn't have very good luck in Chikara either. <laughs> yeah, but, but he had awesome matches. Well, here's... Here it's is, not the outcome that counts. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my question. Then... Um, would you say that Rich Swan is proof that win loss record doesn't really matter? Oh, I totally absolutely. Agree. Yeah, Rich, yeah. Rich Swan doesn't take a loss and be like, "Oh man, they don't, they don't like me." You know, they don't want me to. Do. No, the, he's getting booked on all these shows because he's unbelievably talented. Yeah, you don't get booked. You know, you don't get booked at Dragon Gate Evolve, CZW, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, and other top. Indie promotions like Chikara and sporadic appearances here and there at Full Impact Pro, AIW. You don't get to these promotions specifically without having the credentials of being a top-notch competitor. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify for all the fans who complain about certain aspects of wrestling. Yeah. And loss records don't matter. Yeah, it's, it's all about the action that happens in the ring. And Rich Swan, great choice by the way, the, is... The action that happens in the ring and the connection to the crowd. If yeah. you can do those things, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's how you play the game. It's how you wrestle the opponent. How you play the game. It's how you wrestle Triple H. It's how you try not to get buried by Triple H. That's why Orton's where he's where at right now. Because of Triple H. But Cesaro will surpass the ball. Evolution. I wish. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. I'm down for Cesaro to have a better legacy than Triple H. Yep. Yeah. That'd probably never happen. Probably not. Maybe Triple it's H will bury him before it happens. My <laughs> prediction. Yeah, Triple H is a joke. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Cesaro have a better uh, than Randy Orton. Yeah. Definitely. It throws way better European uppercuts. No shit. Not for lack of trying, Randy. No, no, Randy does no, really good. You're, yeah. you're up next, we got the midweek wrap up where we, we talk about main event, NXT, and not TNA this week. Yeah, I didn't watch it. So I, I missed main event. Sorry, I, guys. That's all right. Okay. Okay. Uh, we opened up main event uh, with Ms. TV. Uh, this was this was actually the first time that Ms. TV was on the WWE Network yeah. live, which was pretty cool. Uh, and this a this really moment, pointless milestone. Yeah, but. He's doing the whole I'm a movie star, okay, so but it's still it, pointless. Last week we had the first highlight reel. Or something. Yeah, the highlight reel is yeah. the first time on main event. 
Right. Yeah. And this week we have the first mid Miss TV on the network. Like, one of those doesn't match up to the other. But he's, he's just. But he's it's just, Miz. Yeah. He's just coming in second place right now. That's all. But yeah. it's Miz. He thinks he's in first place. Right. But he's wrong. But this was. At I'm the Miz and I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, not as cool as the high rail. Uh, obviously not as cool as the high rail, but in Miz's mind, it's just as cool, if not cooler. Than this was a really good promo for Miz, because Miz has kind of been on a downhill slope since he lost the lost the championship. He's always been he's been a good promo guy. When yeah. he, when he's at the top of his game, you have said he's a good promo guy. Don't yeah. lie. Miz, you, Miz you can be a good. You promo said guy. last week. You did. That the Bray Wyatt Jericho Miz. Three strong promo guys. Yeah. You said that. Don't him, even... be, him being the weakest out of the three. Yes. But he's still... But he's still a good promo To guy. be mentioned in the same breath as Wyatt and Jericho as a strong promo guy. Yes. Even the weakest. It's... Yeah. So this was... This I felt was a really good... This put Miz back on track. And I think this movie star gimmick is something that he needed. Because it's giving Miz something new... He can add to his already egotistical mindset, yeah. but it gives him a new platform to work on. Until and The Rock comes back and just cuts him well, yeah, then, down. Then, yeah, then he's, <laughs> then he's screwed. Uh, but Sheamus would come out and talk back at Miz. They're, they're still going at each other because they're building up for the Battleground Battle Royal. Uh, Sheamus would attempt a bro kick. Uh, Miz would get the hell out of Dodge, and it would set up for the main event. Main event. Up next, we'd have Emma come out, and I thought, oh no, Emma is going to lose. She's in so much trouble. Then I saw Cameron come out, I was like, no, don't make her lose to Cameron. Yeah, it would have been worse if it was even Marie. But Emma won. Emma defeated Cameron, who... That's right, all you people out there thought it was going to end. You can't stop the evolution. Not even jail can stop the evolution. Believe in the evolution. Do it. Do it. Uh, Do Ka- it. Cameron would attack Emma after the match. Uh, Naomi, who was on commentary, obviously setting up for their uh, Battleground pre-show match. Yeah, it's not a pre-show, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, because it's not actually on the card. Uh, Naomi would come in, save Emma. Up next, we had uh, Kofi and Big E uh, taking on Ryback's Baxel, which, to our note of earlier, all black guys are friends, because apparently Kofi and Big E have a secret handshake. Why not? We, we made that note, but it didn't make it to the video. So. No, earlier we did. Oh, yeah. We talked about it earlier. We did. We just fucked that segment up. Keep it in. Keep it fucked up. All right, I don't care. Thomas Wolf doesn't know what he's talking about. Go away, kid. And Kofi and Biggie with their secret handshake would beat Rybaxel. Really? With their secret handshake. With, 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 yep. Well, because Rybaxel has one, too, but uh, Kofi and... The Co- better... Kofi has a better one. The better uh-huh. secret handshake wins the match. Kofi. That's going to be the new... Bingston. <laughs> the Kofi new determining Bingston. factor in the it's tag team. No, Clangston. <laughs> team Clangston. That sounds... Clubber Langston. Racy. Slightly racier and racist than Sam Kofi and Biggie would beat Rav Axel. Very basic match. Not much to talk about. Uh, going on to the main event, Sheamus would defeat The Miz... Uh, Miz is doing the whole thing like he doesn't want the money maker hit, so he would avoid a bro kick and get rolled up, and Sheamus would win. Uh, yeah, yeah, Sheamus. And that was my net. And WWE, good, good for you, Sheamus. Book one of these guys against somebody I care about. Because he doesn't sound Sheamus. familiar, right? They yeah. booked Miz versus Jericho last week, so yeah, that that, that was counts. that was decent. Yeah, because he likes Jericho. Yeah, I like Jericho. Okay. Now book Sheamus versus Jericho. Huh? Uh, everyone versus Jericho. At the same time. Jericho has to run the gauntlet yeah. of every wrestler in WWE. That'd be, that'd that'd be a long match. That'd that'd suck. Suck. Even if like halfway through he gets knocked out and people are just walking in and pinning him, <laughs> it'd still be a long match. Yeah. yeah. Uh, moving on to NXT, we Next! Op- we'd open up with the VOD villains entrance. The new entrance. It just gets better. Yeah. New and improved. I hope. I hope. I that, honestly thought there was a guy standing there I, doing it. You know what? And I, I, I watched. I was like, "Where'd the guy go?" 
Yeah. I really hope that guy ends up being their manager. Yeah, I was like... But then it wasn't really a guy. No, it wasn't really a guy. Well, it was really a guy. Yeah, obviously they recorded the guy do it. But I love the spotlight thing. Yeah. And then they, like, they walk up. It's, it was such a cool image. Yeah. Uh, they would defeat uh, Enzo and Cass uh, when the Legionnaires would come out to distract Enzo and Cass. Yeah, good match. So th- there's... A, th- I like the build of the tag yeah. teams here. So it's, there should be some interesting stuff, some really good... Tag teams up once the Ascension ends up dropping the titles. Yeah. Eventually, whoever that may be. villains. Uh, we get the update that next week, Summer Rae will be getting her women's title title shot against Charlotte, so that should be an interesting match. Uh, we get CJ Parker versus Xavier Woods. This is a really lame match. I, yeah. want, I actually was so not into the match. Like, two minutes in, I left to go get something. Which is Un- unfortunate so, because Xavier Woods is so well, see, and that, Dr. Xavier Woods. That's, yes. that's the problem, is that I don't care about CJ Parker. Could we even call him Professor Xavier? He's not a teacher yet. Oh. Damn, I was going to start singing the X-Men name and everything. Anyway. Eh, CJ Parker. You suck. I yeah. don't like you. Uh, up next, Sasha Banks would defeat uh, Alexa Bliss. Good I match. love Alexa Bliss. Alexa- Alexa yeah. Bliss is awesome. Yes. Really good finish to this match. Like, Sasha pulled out a really good just combination for the win and won, yeah. and won by that submission. That was a great finish to the match. Yeah, yeah the, the, like, the backcracker into the cross face. Yeah. yeah that awesome was really combination. Oh. oh, man. Like, that was by far the match of the night. That was show stealer for yeah. NXT. Great I match. I cannot wait. Five years from now, WWE's Steven division is going to be phenomenal. You know, I, I wouldn't even say five years. I think they're, especially with how quickly they're bringing people up from the NXT the NXT roster, I think, I, I'd i say within the next year, they're going to yeah, have a great they, crop of deals. They also have to cut out the terrible ones. They already started that because... I know. Oxana's not. Right. But Eva is. She was hot. So is Eva Marie. Hot sauna. Yeah. But Oxana's hot. Uh, moving and on, a better wrestler. Moving on to a, cu- a couple other really good, talented guys. Uh, Adam Rose and Jason Jordan. Adam Rose, I feel like he's only getting sp- getting the spotlight on NXT. Yeah, so here's a little funny anecdote about my viewing of this match. When the intro happened, the NXT intro, I saw Adam Rose. I'm like, why is he still in the video? He, he was called up to the main roster. <laughs> he's not in NXT anymore. And then he shows up on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, they, I think WWE may be pushing him back down a little bit. Because I, I, think, I feel like they, they brought him up without something for him to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I, th- I, th- I think that this is a good time. You know, he's he's kind of at a steady pace. People know who he is. So to bring him up occasionally, yeah. we'll still get in that spotlight. But he needs NXT to shine. Yeah. And, it, you know... I think they need to get Sandow back to his yes, back to his original gimmick because that is the perfect gimmick to feud Adam Rose with. Yeah, and it, it, I mean that would get better suit Ty Dillinger. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, he said he got hurt. Yeah, which is why Jason Jordan is back on the singles. Which sucks time. because I really like Jordan and Dillinger's tag team. Yeah, they remind me of Hoss and Benjamin. Yeah, modern day Hoss Benjamin. Yeah, definitely. Uh, up next, uh, there would be a backstage interview with Callisto, and the VOD villains would interrupt, and you would get Callisto saying that next week, since he's not teaming yeah. with El Local anymore, which I did didn't happen? know before. Yeah, that pisses that was, me off. Like that's how they broke him up. I think that promo right there. That pisses me off. I want Callisto and El Local as a tag team. Yeah. He's giving you death eyes. What you going? What you gonna do, sucker? Sorry, Joe. Um, but Kalisto would say that next week on NXT, he'll be bringing a new tag team partner to face the Bob Villains. Big Hara. Yeah. A mysterious tag team partner of mystery. Maybe. Maybe. If he brought up Rey Mysterio, that'd be rad. <laughs> oh, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Make it Rey Mysterio. Yeah. yeah. That would well, be... I don't think they play. can. I think it's probably already recorded. I don't think they can go back to ah, and make it. Maybe. Re-record unless, this match. Unless they're, unless they're recording this week. Make it Rey Mysterio. you got time. Or if you've already made it, Sinkara, change it to Rey Mysterio in the future. Yeah. Don't even, like, 
don't even make it a thing. Just have and now Rey Mysterio's his partner. Just like you rip, wrote the tag team away. Just there you go. You know who I think they're gonna replace El Cal with? Hmm. Ricardo Rodriguez. Ooh. Yeah, where's Ricardo been? He's been doing commentary. Spanish yeah. Spanish announced commentary on the interviews. Yeah. Oh, and maybe maybe they'll just switch roles so Ricardo will wrestle. And Kalisto will yeah. be his. <laughs> Hello, Cal gets to do commentary on the next interview. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, our main event would be Sami Zayn versus Tyson Kidd. Didn't hold a candle to a tag team match. Yeah, last week. I liked the match though. It was it was yeah. it was good, but I wanted more. I, I get that's I, it's I me being selfish. I think we're getting a little spoiled with some of the NXT matches. Uh, I get yeah I get yeah. I guess I have to understand that eventually there's not going to be a great NXT match. Yeah, which is why I was glad we had Sasha versus Alexa. That was, that was a great. Uh, I, I like it because it's Tyson Kidd's one of his first strong showings as heel, in yes. the way he behaved through the match from bell to bell. Yeah, very true. Okay, yeah. It, okay, so it was, it was more so a character build for Tyson Kidd. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that is it for the midweek wrap up because we don't care about TNA. Yeah, I watched Dawn of the Planet of the Apes instead. How is that, by the way? It changed a few things and it's a great Batman movie. More on that, never. Never. Guys. 